So in some of my past videos, uh, you guys have seen the CRM pipeline template I've been using. And I mentioned it's very similar to the default one you can get from Notion, but that I've tweaked it quite a bit. So I've created this copy of mine. Uh, that's a public template you can grab for yourself and use that's very, very close to what I use for our agency. And I'll show you what I have in here and some of the changes you may want to make to it to, to make it your own. Uh, so this is the full list of columns in it. We have the name. You can just type in the name of the prospective client you have. The primary contact, in this case, is just a text box. But if you've seen the other ones where I have the contact database, um, I would probably make this a linked field in here to link it to the contact record. But you can just type in the name here. I add whatever notes you want behind it. The stage of your project, depending how your process works. And here I have initial contact, discovery, building a contract, presenting a contract. It's kind of the four sales steps you'd have here. You could have 10 steps, whatever you want to do, all that, all that in there. The status of this. So is it open? Did you win it? Did you lose it? Or is it on hold? We kind of have an on hold bucket for those that haven't won or lost. They've kind of disappeared for a while. We want it out of our view, but not gone. Uh, so you can adjust those as need be. Owner, this is one that I would probably, in most cases, turn this into a um, person one, just to pull the people that are in your Notion thing. But for this case, I just made it a simple drop down with Mickey and then made up Steve and Julie. So who's responsible for following up on this lead to try to make this transaction happen? Close date is what date do you think you'll win or lose this or what date did you win or lose this? So this is a date in the future usually saying, okay, with Tesla, I think probably by November 25th, we should have our answer. We should close it or whatever. Or in some cases you have like with Target here, we lost it or excuse me, Amazon, we lost back on November 4th. So once it happens and you mark it as won or lost, you should change that date to reflect what date you won or lost it. Uh, value would be the total value if you win this proposal. Um, how much is it really worth? The win percentage is a number you make up for how likely do you think you are to win it. So whenever we have a call with a prospective client, we'll kind of talk afterwards like, so what do you think? Like, I don't feel good. I think we have like an 80% shot of winning. Okay, cool. Put 80% or I don't know, 20% or, you know, just, it's really just kind of off the cuff stuff and not super accurate, but can give you some idea of what's going on. And then this Wade column is automatically done. A simple formula that takes the value times the percentage gives you the Wade. Uh, we like to track the source of our leads, where they come in. So again, you can add whatever you want here, but Google from networking events, a referral or from social media, add things in there. If you lose it, you can tag the reason why you lost. Things like price, timing, features. I'm sure you have other things in here you might lose. And then follow up is when do you want to follow up with them again? And this I have pull in other places. I'll show you that. Uh, so these will come up on this day to remind me, hey, it's time to follow up with this lead again to see what's going on. And that's where either I'll see my notes if I left some notes, you know, in the bottom of the thing here, or usually I'll just kind of check my email to see what the last touch point was, but different ways to handle that. So where this gets cool though, and where this really made me start to love Notion was the different views you can have. So I've built in a bunch of views um, for you guys to use in the template here. So everything is what you see here. It's so all the wins and losses and all the things in your, in your CRM. Everything open and on hold is the same view, uh, but just the ones that are open or on hold, not won or lost. So there's a filter on this that just says, if it's open or if it's on hold, show them in here. So this is all the open or on hold opportunities you have. The projects open pulls a Kanban style um, based on where they are in the process. So in theory, if you, you talk to Elon and you know the discovery call, well, you're going to start working on the contract. You can drag it over to building contract just so you can see what's going on. Um, and again, this is filtered to status is open. So this is just all of our open projects, really the ones you're actively working on. And then you have the on hold, which is the same view, same deal, but just the filters, those that are on hold. So in our case, we spend a lot of time in the open one, not as much time in the on hold. The Mickey follow-up pulls just a list of all the projects that I need to be following up with. So the filter here is if the owner is Mickey and the follow-up is on or before today, so I should have followed up today or I missed it in a previous day. And then what I want to say is if it's open or on hold, you can't say and, and, or, you have to follow suit. So I say if the owner is Mickey and the follow is on or before today, and it is not won, and it is not lost. So basically saying if it's open or on hold, do on or before today, assign to me. So here's the ones I need to follow up with. So in theory, in my workday today, I would look at this, really I would probably clean it up a little bit first, but uh, you can play with the template, but I would look at this, say, okay, I need to follow up with Tim Cook. So let me go to my email, see what the last contact was deal with it, see what's going on. Usually after that conversation, I'll probably adjust the win rate and say, gosh, that didn't go well. He's looking at that other company now. So it's like a 40%, uh, maybe put some other notes in it, but have my follow-ups there. Um, similar things for Steve and Julie, you know, you can have different ones, same deal. There's nothing in it, but if the owner is Steve and follow-ups on or before today, and it's not one, not lost. So all his follow-ups are here, all Julie's. So you can come into this every day 
or you can look at it separately. So if I have, we'll go out here, but now I have a dashboard. Picture this is your big Notion dashboard with all your stuff on it, um, all your links to things. The main thing you look at all the time, what you can do is here is add a linked database. So we'll do a create a linked database. Um, and we're going to pull in the CRM template in this case. Okay, so we're going to pull in that database, but we have way too much stuff here. So we're going to do a couple things. We'll set up a filter first. So we'll add a filter where it is owned by me. And then where the follow up is on or before today. And then, of course, we have to add those other things. And the status is not one. Because, again, you have the old ones where the follow-up was a year ago, but you've already won or lost it or whatever. So, And the status is not lost. And so I'd have this right on my main Notion dashboard. And what I would do here also is kind of clean things up. I don't need all the data in here. Um, so we can hide a lot of the stuff. So in the properties... Um, I don't need a loss reason because these are stuff that's open. I don't need the owner because it's just for me. Um, don't really care about the source, stage, status, weight, or win percentage. So probably something like this. You know, I can pull this over here and say, okay, cool. Um, I need to follow up with this today. So, okay, Tim Cook, let me go see that. You know, without having to go into that other section. In with all my other Notion stuff in here. I actually have a few of these different kind of linked databases to pull in data on a day-to-day -day basis as I need it. And in this case, if I go reach out to Tim Cook, see what's going on. So I could go in here, leave some notes, you know, had a great call, had a bad call, left a message, whatever the case was, and then just change that follow-up date. So, okay, I talked to him today. I told him I'd reach out next Wednesday. So let's make this next Wednesday. And it disappears because it no longer meets the criteria. So I know I'm done working on that for the day, which is, works out very well. So back in the template here. So Mickey follow-up again in here is now empty as well because I've caught up with that one. But a few other things in here I think are useful. Uh, for us with our agency, we one metric we follow weekly is how much business have we won in the past 30 days. It's a good metric just to see not how much money's come in or how much is in the bank. Those are important as well. But how much business have we won in the last 30 days? And with other applications, it takes a little bit of work to go and kind of add up and see what you've got, especially if you have smaller projects and have a lot of them. It can be messy. So this I can just pull up and see very quickly, ah, we've won $25,000 worth because we won the target deal. Um, and so what this is, is just a filter saying, if the status is one and the close date is within the past month, do it. And then I just had it calculate a sum at the bottom here to see how much have we won in the last 30 days. And this will automatically, every time you pull it up, based on that close date. So remember, if you win or lose something, update that close date. It'll show you the total there. So every week when I'm running our stats, it takes me just one click to say, ah, oh, okay, that number is 25,000. That's good. That's bad. You know, you'll have different metrics for yourself, but you can, can know what's going on. Uh, I have some other stats. I can see if I want to see what we've won all time. So I can say our all time wins, we've only won one thing in this thing, so $25,000 total, so not bad, uh, which is the same as, um, actually, it's, the next one's the same. So the other one is projects open. So everything open, I can see the stats on that. Again, the value, the total value if we were to win everything, but then the weighed value, like, okay, based on our percentage chances. So realistically, we have $561,000 out here. Realistically, we're going to win about one thirty-five. With four items, those numbers probably don't work out real exact. But if you have 50 of them in here and you're fairly good at guessing, you can get some pretty good estimates on how much potential business is out there, which is huge. Um, again, in this case, projects open here, and then the everything open is actually the same page. But as you get a little more sophisticated, our, our stuff gets a little fancier than this, so the stat's kind of useful. And then I have one more in here for lost projects. So just if I want to see a list of everything we lost, I kind of look at this, see why we lost things. If I keep seeing price, 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 maybe we need to look at our pricing or... If I see some for features, or maybe I see everyone that came from Google, we tend to lose for price, which <laughs> tends to happen for us quite a bit. People Googling tend to be more price sensitive, so we lose more of those. But you can just get some ideas for that in here. So for me, I kind of tend to live in projects open. This is where I work. But realistically for me, I live in my dashboard. I don't visit this that often because it'll pull in the ones I need to talk to automatically without me having to visit that all the time. And then before the weekly meetings, I can hop in. So, okay, let me go to our spreadsheet and add some stats in. Okay, cool. We have 25,000 last 30 days. And then of our projects open, we have 561 potential, 134 weighed. You know, get those numbers real quick. And this has been a, a great way to track projects. Um, and I encourage you to look at the contacts video I've done because I do a lot of pulling from contacts to make all this kind of dance even a little bit better. But for me, as I played with Notion, I kind of messed around with it for a few months and thought it was a neat alternative to Evernote, but then getting the CRM was, for me, the turning point. I saw the value in here, how this was better than really any other system I'd use just because I can customize it to be exactly what I want, 
pull the stats I want. Um, does a great job. So uh, go to notiontips.com. If you're seeing this somewhere else, we have the, the this video you're watching, but also that template is public for you guys to download and use on your own. If you have any other tips or thoughts on how to make this even better, please leave a comment and let me know. Thanks.